This video will demonstrate how to properly configure drop-down menus found within the employee record so that your organization-specific information can be captured. This is all handled through the List Configuration tool in the Configure desktop under the Employee section. Each of the menu items in this Employee section will correspond to a tab or a particular data field within the employee record. First is Certifications. To add a certification, click Add Certification and enter in a description. These certifications are managed in the employee record along with the date that the training was completed as well as the expiration date. The system then validates those dates when entering schedules, entering notes, or creating timesheets to ensure that the certification is up to date based on the date of service of the entry. As with all validations, your security administrator controls whether or not the entries can happen if the certifications are expired or incomplete. The Enable MAR checkbox is specific to the implementation of the Electronic Medication Administration Record, as we call EMAR. With this checked, the system will ensure that the employee's medication administration training, or a similar type of certification, is valid and current before the administration of the medications can be documented under the MAR tab in the client record. If the certification is not up to date, they will not be eligible documenting in the MAR. This is the same list that may have been configured under the client section since certifications may be assigned to both clients and employees. You may choose to edit this list in either place. Call centers are typically distinguished by physical location so that information about each call center can be reported separately. Call centers are set up and established at the onset of implementation and should be determined by a collective group in management as call center is a valuable reporting criteria in each package, clinical, billing, payroll, and accounting. Each call center will have a code and the code is just a unique identifier for each one. The description of the cost center is what is visible in the drop-downs when assigning clients and employees respectively to their cost centers and when reporting. The state code is important for payroll purposes, mainly when you provide services in multiple states and therefore are using multiple state tax tables. And finally, a checkbox is provided for marking a particular cost center as inactive. Of all the menu items in the employee section, this one is required in the initial setup so that when clients and employees are entered into the system, they are assigned to a call center, a requirement in order to save the record. This also is the same list that may have been configured under the client section since call centers are assigned to both clients and employees and can be edited in either place. The Credential Types configuration allows you to restrict services based on specific credentials. By linking the credential type to particular services, you are controlling the set of services that any employee assigned to that credential type can provide. This is useful at the scheduling level so that a scheduler can only schedule employees for the services they are eligible to provide. This is just as useful at the notes, ensuring that staff are able to only write notes against the services specific to their credentials. After entering in a description, you will then check each of the services specific for those credentials. Credential types are then applied to the employee on the Demographics tab of the employee record. Configuring departments allows you to manage the different departments of the agency. When employees are assigned to departments, you can then report upon each department accordingly. This can be especially helpful when trying to understand payroll cost per department. Job titles are typically set up at the onset of implementation, as every employee must be assigned to a job title in order to save the record. When entering the description of the job title, checkboxes are available to indicate the basic role of the job title. 
checking caregiver allows all employees with that job title to show up in the caregiver drop downs. This is critical for any scheduling, note writing, billing, or timesheet entries to take place. Supervisor indicates that the employees with this job title will be linked to the client as the supervisor for caseload purposes and or to the employee for timesheet purposes. And approver indicates that the employees with this job title will be responsible for approving the notes. If you have implemented scheduling or timesheets, then you will need to set up pay types. Pay types are the mechanism for inputting non-billable time and possibly billable time on the timesheets. If you are processing payroll through on target, then the pay type setup becomes even more critical as they will represent the various ways in which an employee gets paid along with the pay rates. There is a separate video that details the pay type setup because of its integration to other modules, so please watch that to learn more. And lastly, pay periods will need to be set up if you intend to implement timesheets. In order for an employee to pull their time entered from notes into their timesheet, pay period start date and end dates should be entered. Pay period visibility can be toggled on or off in the system by clicking the associated checkbox. When this is checked, employees will be able to create their timesheets, making it an active pay period. Should you have any questions regarding the employee configuration workflow, please submit your inquiry by going to Options, Support, and Contact Support.